Hi, today I want to talk to you from the Word of God about living above worry. What is worry? Worry is self-centeredness. You got your eyes off of God onto yourself and you think somehow you have to pull yourself through when God promised he would take care of you. The world worries and so we don't need to. Why act like the world? Let's act like Christians who truly believe the Word of God and let's live our life above worry. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Glad to have you here with us. I'm gonna to talk to you today about living above worry. Why is that so important? Worry is self-centeredness. It all comes from thinking about you, caring about you. How's this gonna work out in my life? What am I supposed to do? All these things. We're gonna talk about living above worry where you don't have to worry. Your trust is in God. And when your trust is in God, you can be the freest person on earth despite how many problems you might have. So again, we're gonna be taking that up. If you wanna open up in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter seven, we're gonna take a look at verse 32. And uh, in that verse, we're gonna be talking about today that God does not want us to have any worries at all. And uh, you'll be blessed by it. So for those of you today who are joining us for the first time, thank you. For those of you who have been watching for a number of you know episodes, thank you again. And for those of you who have been watching for a long, long time and some even for years, again, I want to thank you for watching the broadcast and then being a partner with me. If you would like to be a partner with me in this broadcast, you can go to bobyandian.com and find a place there. Now, some of you, some of you say this every time. Of course I do, because there are people out there that even though they hear it, they don't don't do anything about it. And one day it strikes them. You know what? When a person gives me things that are valuable, I need to give something valuable back. God gave it to me. I'm giving it to you. And by giving into this ministry, you're helping to spread it and more people can hear because we've got ideas and things opening up in the days to come. And I'm just looking forward to more finances coming where I don't just have to keep coming and asking you and telling you and doing uh, marathons and things like that about raising money. I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to present the need to you and I'll bring special needs to you at times. But I trust God that you can hear from God. You give as you purpose in your heart, not grudgingly. That's because Bob pressured you or of necessity. You feel like if you don't, some curse is going to come on you. I want you to give because you love God, you love the word and you love me and you want to give and you identify with this ministry. I'm sure there's other ministries you identify with too that you give to. I'm just simply saying if this ministry corresponds with something in your heart and there's like this thing that goes off like I like this teaching. It's simple. It's easy to understand. Then become a partner with me and give. Go to bobyandian.com. You'll find a place there on the web page where you can become a partner with me. Thank you in advance. I do have a praise report also here. And this comes from Clinton, who says that um, this is some of the greatest teaching on the Bible I have heard. I was just studying the same passage, and now Pastor Bob brought immense light how thankful I am for this ministry. This is some of the richest revelation I have heard. I didn't write this. He did. But see how it identifies, and they, the moment they hear, they go, this is truth. Well, that's what God wants you to do, is respond to that. So again, I thank uh, him for that uh, praise report. And if you have a praise report, please send it to me. Let me have it. And again, I even have an open mic. You can come and, and go there and record it and we'll play it here on the broadcast here. So again, I'd love to have you respond by telling us how this broadcast is a blessing to you. Now we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 32. Notice what Paul says, I want you to be without care. You know what the word care means? Worry or anxieties. I want you to be without any worry or anxieties. Listen, not to worry is not a suggestion. It's a command. This is not where he's saying, well, I wish you would. I wish you would. No, he's giving it's a command. I want you to be without worry or any anxiety. It's a command, not a suggestion. And it's just as much a command as thou shalt not kill. Since it's not a wish or a desire, but a command from God, it's just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than murder or theft. 
left. So what we're saying here is when we get so self-centered that we start to worry about everything, it's simply saying, I don't trust God anymore for the needs of my life. He saved me, which I could not do. He gave me his Holy Spirit, which I cannot do. He gave me his word, which I did not write. He's given me all these things. He has met my needs before. He has healed my body, which I did not ask. You know, I did not do myself. He did it. It simply comes back to this. If God did this, who am I to now switch to me thinking it's up to me to sustain my life from now on? You know, the times we're living in right now, man, we see inflation happening around us. We see where a war is happening all around us. And all of a sudden we start to get worried. What am I going to do? Well, do what you've always done. Keep your trust in God. Don't put your trust in people. Don't put your trust in the economy. Don't put your trust in the president, in the Congress and all these things. Those guys are up there and I'm sure many of them are fighting in the right direction, trying to do a good job. And there's people up there trying not to do a good job and trying to destroy our country. But I can simply say this, they don't take care of you. You don't go to the president when you have a need. You go to God when you have a need. So it comes back to this, to not trust God and to be so wrapped up in your worry, it's more more dangerous than murder or theft. Jesus said worry is a danger to our spiritual as well as our natural life. If you worry, you'll never reach maturity. Luke chapter 8 and verse 14. The ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares. The word for cares here is worries. The people go out and they're choked with thorns, and these wor- the thorns are the worries about riches and the pleasure of life and bring no fruit to maturity. This is quoting Luke 8, 14. Notice this. You bring no fruit to maturity. Worry is undue concern over an issue of life. You can be concerned if you set the alarm off as you left the house. You can think about that. Did I I think about that quite often. Notice it's one thing to think about something. It's nothing to get way over concerned about it. So again, you can be naturally concerned if you set the alarm on the house when you left or not, but you can be overly concerned. Imagining your home is being broken into, your family's in danger, somebody's robbing your house right now when God promised he would take care of you. That doesn't mean you don't have an alarm on your house. There's natural things you can do. And the Bible even tells us when a man's going to break into a house, he has to break past all the boundaries that are set there to break open the door and get into the house. The point of it is you still have a door, you still have a lock on it. It, but your trust is not in the door. Your trust is not in the lock. Your trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust you lock the car when you get out of it and go into a store. Why? Because there's people out there and you might as well not invite them to take your car. So you do all the things in natural you can, but beyond that point, you keep your trust in God. Worry anticipates the worst producing restlessness so you can't think and you can't do anything else. Worry is the opposite of trusting in God and trusting in his word. Jeremiah chapter 17. Take a look with me at verses 17 and 18. And here it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Notice this, not in yourself, not in others around you, not in a man or a woman of high power. Note you trust in God. Again, verse 17 and 18. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. This doesn't mean the waters planted. It simply means it planted beside the waters and that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful. Notice this, the word careful means worried. And the person is not worried in the year of drought, neither shall you cease from yielding fruit. Yes, drought is going to come. Yes, hard times are going to come. But if you live by the times you're in, you are not living by God because God stays the same. His word stays the same. He's dependable every single day of the year. And you are going to be like a tree planted beside the rivers of water. This is the same thing brought out in Psalm 1. The opening verses, verses 1 through 3, tell us exactly the same thing. And Jeremiah here might even have been quoting David 
when he wrote this psalm. My wife and I, a number of years ago, we drove to California. We ended up driving a number of times. But when we got out there and we started entering the state of California, we drove across that desert that was there. And we looked out there, and I mean, I wouldn't want to live there. It was flat and all that. You could see mountains off in the distance, but it was brown. But the Colorado River ran right through there. And wherever the Colorado River was, on both sides of the Colorado River, it was green. There was grass there. There was trees growing, things like that. You know why? Because the grass and the trees, they were not worried about getting water. They were planted right beside the water. When you and I get born again, we are planted beside the rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit becomes our nourishment. The Holy Spirit becomes our strength. The Word becomes what we grow in. And I don't listen. It happens to this. If the world around me all ends up in starvation, I will still have my needs met. The word tells us this. So my leaf will be green. I will, I will not be worried in the year of drought and neither will I cease from yielding fruit. My life will still be offering fruit to other people. And when they're over there and they're suffering and they're looking for things, we have it as Christians to give to them. God would not command us to be free from worry if it wasn't possible. God has a life for us which has no worry attached to it at all, only the peace of God. Philippians chapter 4 Verses six and seven says, be careful for nothing. You know what the Greek says on this? Don't worry about anything. So don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. When I have no worry in my life and my t trust is totally in God's promises and trust totally in his love for me, you know what happens? God puts a guard in my heart. Here it says in the King James, it'll keep your heart. And the Greek says it will guard your heart. The peace that passes all understanding becomes a guard for me and it guards my heart and it guards my mind through Jesus Christ. What the verse is simply saying is, is when I do not worry about anything in life, but keep my full trust in God, my full trust in his word, then what happens is he sets a sentry in my life, hangs around me all day, guards me when I'm asleep, guards me when I'm awake, guards me when I'm on the road, guards me when I'm at home, guards me at all time. And that guard is the peace of God. The peace of God comes to you when you don't have a worry about anything. God's going to take care of me. So Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3 simply tells us a mind fixed on the Lord has no worries and only peace. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed or fixed on you because he trusts in you. Psalm 55, verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. I love that Hebrew word for cast. It means it's like a person wrestling and you finally win. How do you win? You take the other person and you slam them onto the mat. And that's what we do with the burdens of life. Instead of wrestling with them, we finally realize one day I'm stronger than you. The word is stronger than you. My God is stronger than you. And you act by faith and pick up your burden and you slam it on the Lord. And the Bible says he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. And the word moved means to waver or to fall. I, listen, in my life, I never plan on wavering. Oh, I have sometimes. There's times I've suddenly seen a problem and looks so great that suddenly I waver for a moment. I just simply repent and keep on following God, knowing this, that Jesus Christ conquered hell on the cross. He conquered death on the cross and nothing that can face me now is worse than what Jesus faced on the cross. And he won and has handed his victory to me. I walk in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I walk in the victory of his word and he sustains me every single day. I'll see you right after the break. It's time for my annual minister's conference. It's going to be March the 7th through the 9th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll be speaking. Joseph Z will be joining me as well as Orlando Juarez teaching on praise and worship. I look forward to it. Every year has been a life-changing event for me and for the ministers who attend. And I believe in, in the year 2024, we're going to see a special move of God like never before. So I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible that are involved in any section of ministry at all. Even though we know that all storms of life are only temporary, they sometimes seem like they are about to engulf us, sink us, and take us under. At this moment, the wind and waves may be raging, heaving, and crashing all around you, but there is a refuge and rest 
in the Lord. But even if you are in the center of a storm, far from all other help, you can cast all your cares on the Lord and enter into God's supernatural rest, right there in the very middle of that storm. Join Pastor Bob Yandian as he explains what you must know and believe in order to sail through all the storms of life completely at peace and totally burden-free. To order Resting Through the Storms of Life, go to bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. The word for worry, Old Testament and New, has the same meaning. It means to be drawn in two directions. To worry says, I know what the Bible says, but look, look at the situation. Well, look at the situation. Yeah, I know, but the problem, you don't know what to do. And you're frozen in one position because you're being pulled in two different directions. You have to make a choice. Make a choice for the word. Turn away from the problems of the world and face the Lord and understand there's no temptation. Face me that God has not made provision for. Did you know God knew this problem was coming even though you didn't? Did you know you were taken by surprise when this problem came, but not God? Do you think when this problem came that God looked at Jesus and said, what are we going to do? I don't know what we are going to do. I have no idea. Well, we better come up with something fast. No, God knew your problem was coming before the foundation of the world because he's omniscient. He knows everything. And because he knew your salvation, knew that you would accept it, he didn't make you get saved, but he knew you would say yes. And so because of that, he's made provision. Because he knew you would say yes, he has a plan for your life all the way throughout eternity, from the time you're born again, all the way into eternity. And God knows what's going to face you, and he has an answer for you. So when you walk into a problem, understand this, the way of escape was there before the problem existed. I can walk into a problem going, ha, huh, you just now showed up problem, but my answer has been there the entire time. My answer is in the midst of this, and I'm going to keep looking for that answer, because you know why? It's here. God has never failed me up until now, and God will not fail me now. That's what God wants you to do. Walk in the desire of the Word, and the Word will fill you with the knowledge that God has answers for you no matter what you face. In fact, the Bible already tells me that not only has He seen me redeemed and all that, He already sees me glorified. You know what glorified means? Glorified is your resurrection body. God already sees me in a resurrection body. It hasn't happened yet. But when did he see me in a resurrection body? Before the foundation of the world, when he saw this problem settled and the next problem settled, he saw all that. And then he also planned for eternity back there. So the things that have not yet come to pass in my life are a done deal. Just like everything up until now has been a done deal. When I got saved and accepted Jesus as my savior, the moment he became my savior, that's a done deal. God saw that I would accept Jesus and knows that when I accepted Jesus, I would become a child of God. And I did. Well, then every day past that, he knows what problems I'm going to face and has already made an answer for me. And right now he can look into eternity and see me in a resurrection body. Why is that important? Why is it important that you realize one day you're going to be in a resurrection body and it's a done deal? Because if God sees me in a resurrection body, then I'm going to come through the problem I'm facing now. And I'm going to come through the next problem I'm going to face and the next problem I'm going to face because God already sees me victorious around the throne of God two million years from now, 20 million years from now, he sees me in heaven. So apparently I'm going to come through this problem. That's the most wonderful thing, but looking at the promises of God, because you are not omniscient, but you get a little taste of what God's omniscience is. He shares a little of his word with you, a piece of his knowledge to let you know that he's going to take care of you and you are special to him. 
So the word for worry means to be drawn in two directions. This was a problem in the Philippian congregation because sometimes the two directions you go, which one is the right one to do? In Philippians chapter four and verse two, the congregation was divided between two women who were saying things that sounded good, but they knew one had to be right, the other had to be wrong. That was Euodius and Syntyche. That's brought out again in Philippians 4 two. James chapter one, verses five through eight says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, that's knowing what to do at the moment. And we all come to those places. But instead of getting worried and falling apart and frustrated, what am I going to do? You go to God. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. He'll never get mad at you for coming to him and asking for help, and it will be given to him. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea and a driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Double-minded seems you're being pulled in two different directions. Is this the right way or is this the right way? Is God's way and the Bible way right? Or is my thoughts and my worries, is there really something here that's tangible about him? Should I be worried about this situation? Look, it's all right to be concerned. We brought that out. Concern simply looks at something and says, did I do the right thing? Well, God's going to answer that. But a worry is one, oh my gosh, I might die in this situation. I, I may be poor, poor after this. I'll be broke after this. You may look at all those things when the Bible says that God will preserve you through all of these things. So a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. It comes back to this. When you begin to have doubts and fears in your life, you become worried in your life. You become unstable in all of your ways. Conquer that thing at the core of it and quit worrying. Speak to your worry and say, just shut up. I'm coming back to the word of God. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed out begging bread. So I will never be forsaken. I'm not going to be begging bread and my seed, my children will not be begging bread either. Worry is the sin of a self-centered believer, a self-occupied believer. Notice this worry is a sin. I can't make it any more plain. And the sin comes because you start looking at yourself and your abilities and you cannot figure a way out of it. Listen, you couldn't save yourself. God did. You couldn't redeem yourself. God did. You couldn't make yourself righteous God did. You couldn't fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. God did. So what makes you think you're so smart from this point on to do it yourself? God has made everything possible for you and you simply need to lean on him. Paul said, do not worry about anything, but in every situation by prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So what was Paul saying? If worry starts to come or even concern starts to come, just go to the Lord in prayer and make your prayer and then add additional thanksgiving to it. Lord, not only do I believe you've heard my prayer, I thank you. The answer is already on the way. In fact, I thank you. The answer is already here. I'm going to look through this whole mess. I'm going to search through all the mess that's here because the way of escape was here before the problem ever existed. That's what it says by prayer and supplication, prayer and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Jesus commanded us, let not your heart be troubled. You know what that means? Don't worry. It's a command. Jesus commands us, don't worry. Fear is the motivator of worry. In the last days, Jesus said, men's hearts would fail them for fear. They're going to fall apart. And you'll see people that used to be strong when facing the situations of life and the world is falling apart around us. We're seeing nations fighting against nations. We're seeing things that the Bible prophesied would come to pass. Instead of looking at it through the Bible, understanding Jesus is going to come back. His return is coming soon, we get all wrapped up in what am I going to do? And we start to fear. And fear is the motivator for worry to enter into your life. Here's something interesting. Worry is always future. It's not right now. It's good. I, I'm not going to make it. We're going to run out of food. We're going to, and you start looking at the future. Worry is always future. Listen, God has taken care of your future every moment up till now, and he's not going to fail you now. But now you think God's going to stop 
and he won't back me anymore and his promises won't work anymore. No, the God who's always taken care of you will continue to take care of you through the rest of your life, through death and into eternity. You know what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34? He said, the flowers don't worry. He said, they don't worry about what they're going to put on, what they're going to get dressed at. He said, flowers are more beautiful and even Solomon in all of his glory didn't look as good as these flowers. And Solomon had to go look and decide what he wanted to buy and, and, and look at the clothes. And all that. Flowers don't worry about it all. God clothes him and the, even the flowers that God clothes and flowers don't worry about what they're going to wear. They look better than Solomon did. And Solomon spent millions of dollars probably on his wardrobe. Then all, all together there too, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, it goes on to say, birds don't worry about food. He said, God takes care of them. They always have food. God provides for them. Flowers and birds did not even know we had a Great Depression. I mean, you never saw flowers over there during the Great Depression. So oh, maybe we need to go stand in line because we need provisions. No flowers depended on God and God took care of them. Birds flew over and always had food because why? Flowers were clothed and birds had food. You know why? They didn't even know we had a Great Depression. You know why? Because God took care of them. Birds just went on as normal. They went on as normal before the uh, Great Depression, during the Great Depression, after the Great Depression. They just kept flying and God always provided food for them. Why can't we be the same? You know what birds did? They flew over the problem. We can do the same thing by flapping along and looking down and saying, what are all those people worried about? Why are they standing in line? We could fly right over it because you know, what? I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. But what if we run out of food? God hasn't lost the recipe for manna. He still knows where it is. It's probably in one of his kitchen drawers. He'll pull it out, pull the card out, and he can make manna again. He did it for 40 years for the children in the wilderness. Worry will not cause you to grow in the slightest. In fact, it's counterproductive to the plan of God. Worry just slows everything down and eventually will bring it to a total stop. So why should you worry when there's no need to worry? In Psalm 1 and verses 1 through 3, we find the same thing we quoted earlier from one of the Old Testament prophets. And here it says it this way, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel or the advice of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. And in his law, he meditates, thinks on day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Again, the Greek word here is planted beside the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Why should you worry when there's no reason to worry? God will take care of you, just like those trees that grow beside a river. I don't care how bad the situation looks. I don't care how bad the desert looks that used to bloom and blossom. You are planted right beside a river of water, and you'll always be taken care of. The world may be deserted. God won't desert you. The world may they think that, you know, they, they're totally by themselves, and they are if they don't have God. But you have the Lord, and He takes care of you. He watches over you. My God shall supply all of my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This is the God we serve. This is the God who takes care of us, and He promises that He would. What am I telling you? The world is not going to get better until Jesus Christ comes back. It's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. But in the midst of all that, even in the tribulation, Matthew chapter 25, God admonishes there to the Jews who are surrounded in the sea of Jerusalem, Whenever you see the abomination of desolation, that is Antichrist sit in the seat that is preserved, reserved for Jesus Christ. When you see him sit there, run, get out of there as fast as you can and gave them three mountain ranges to run to and promised if they would stay there, they would be taken care of. I mean, even in the tribulation, God has a plan for people to be taken care of, people that trust in him. If God will take care of them in the tribulation, how about this time we're living in today, which is before the tribulation even begins. God will take care of us and before before the tribulation comes, he will lift up his church, take us to heaven at the rapture of the church. I'm simply here to tell you, you can't lose with the stuff we use. The passages of scripture are powerful. And God simply says, why worry about anything? I've got everything covered. Have a great day. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. 
If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.